Good afternoon. It is today is the 71st, I believe. 71st, 72nd. I think it's the 72nd day. It's so hard to keep up. They seem to be going so fast. Did you notice that? I don't know if you didn't, but I sure did. Maybe it's because I've been listening to my own teaching and I have been keeping busy, working on keeping positive, uh, and filling the days. That way they do go by faster. Well, today on the National Day calendar, it happens to be National Burger Day. It's actually National Beef Burger Day, National Hamburger Day, National Brisket Day, and I have made it for my vegetarian self, National Bean Burger Day. And I've already made bean burgers for lunch. So I did that one. Got a couple interesting ones tomorrow, but we'll wait till tomorrow for that, right? Let's forget about tomorrow because we're working on today. And today we are talking about those annoying red flags. You know, like you're going along, you're doing life, you're doing what you want, when you want it, how you want it. All of a sudden you get this red flag. It's not a physical red flag. It's a, an awareness that, I don't know if you should do that. It, the red flags in our consciousness are just like the red flags in our environment. For example, when, uh, when my brother-in-law gets ready to have mowing done at the campground, he puts out little, you know, red flags or cones or whatever so that people don't mow what they're not supposed to mow. We have red flags in parking areas. There's all kinds of red flags and their meaning is to, to wake you up and so you don't go where you wouldn't want to go, you know? So one of the things, one of the uh, things that we notice is when we want to do something, we get that red flag warning that says that's not such a good idea. Did, did you ever happen to have that happen to you? I know I have over and over. And much to my own dismay, many times, I just took that red flag, tossed it aside, and did what I wanted anyway. Why? Because I thought I knew better than even my own warning. Not right. Where do those red flags come from? Well, let's go back to our... Uh, what we've talked about over and over is the four quadrants of consciousness. The upper two, intuitive sensing. That's our spiritual nature. That's the part that is in harmony with all that is good. Knows truth, lives truth, can discern between wise things to do and wise things not to do. Uh, for lack of a better word, good and bad or good and evil. One brings good results, the other one brings pain, suffering, and uh, disappointment. So we really don't want to go there. So frankly, I'm not afraid to call it bad. A lot of people say, well, you know, in truth, there is no good or bad. Well, like one of my teachers said when I was in seminary, uh, he's, I hate it. He's, what if somebody came up to you and and stepped on your toe and said, what in your consciousness brought that to you? <laughs> and you step back on theirs and said, what in your consciousness brought that to you? I think that was fractured, fractured story there, but I think you get the basic idea. Our lower consciousness, we call it carnal, or it is actually like our animal nature. So I, I had to tell you this, folks, we're animals. We have, we have all the bodily organs and stuff of an animal, and we are sentient moving beings, uh, except that we like to think that we are very smart. Um, 
I don't know if you ever heard this, but I heard that the smartest animal, aside from humans, the smartest animal on the uh, surface of the earth is, um, is the pig. And that kind of gives me pause. Uh, and then the smartest animal in the ocean is the octopus. Did you know you can go on YouTube and you can watch videos where they, they film oct octopi doing all kinds of, of interesting things, uh, demonstrating their behaviors and their likes and their dislikes and how to get away from things. And it, it's quite brilliant. So let's get back to where we are. No matter how intelligent we are, that does not mean we are spiritually awakened, living in a state of higher consciousness. Intelligence is of the physical body, the ability of the brain to think or function. Some people have a very high intellect. There are serial killers with high intellect, so it's not a, you're not, doesn't mean they're in touch with their spiritual stuff. The lower consciousness works on a survival level. They do anything and everything that they perceive um, their survival depends upon. And that doesn't even mean it makes sense. It's to them it makes sense. And we all have a lower consciousness which we are working on uplifting through the way we think, the way we act, uh, the way we feel, and we can all do this. This is why uh, regular um, prayer and meditation, and that, that doesn't mean it has to be done in a pew of a church or you know, at an altar so much as taking the time, we can take the time wherever we are to connect with that which is greater. But in the day-to-day -day life, we have opportunities over and over that want to override this higher knowledge. It is passions, it is hungers, it is uh, the lusts, it is the things we want. Things, not the things we need, not the things that are good for us, they're things we want. That doesn't mean everything we want is bad, it means sometimes we want more of a good thing than is intelligent uh, to have. There's that constant battle going on between the higher consciousness and the lower consciousness. If we think about a parent and child, the parent loves the child and wants what's best for them, and sometimes that means disciplining the child, saying no, maybe a time out, whatever we deem will get the result that we believe we need. So um, if we consider ourselves that the spiritual part, the awakened and enlightened part of us is the adult, let's say, and the lower part of us, the very, very human part, is the unenlightened part, is the child. So we can see a great need for self-discipline. Now, we like to blame others for our mistakes because it's very hard for us to admit we made a mistake, isn't it? Ooh. We're afraid if we admitted we are wrong or we made a, sta a mistake that we will be rejected, unloved, damned, condemned, you know, stuff like that, which is just silly because, see, that's one thing. The lower consciousness is really silly. It has silly, irrational thoughts very often. We, but we do like to blame someone else because we don't want to take the blame for our own, our own uh, messes that we make. There's a cute story about a woman who uh, she just loved to shop. I mean, that was her, her uh, what do they call that? Guilty pleasure. She loved to shop. And her husband kept telling her, you've got to stop. You, you've got to take a break from shopping. You are putting us in the poor house. You are maxing out our credit cards. And so she promised him that she would not shop for a while. Well, one day she shopped. <laughs> she had one of those, you know, oh, 
I need something to cheer myself up. <coughs> Excuse me. So she went shopping and she saw this dress. Oh, and she loved it. Well, she couldn't help herself. She bought the dress and she brought it home and she slipped it into the closet thinking her husband wouldn't notice. Well, he just happened to go into the closet for something and there was the brand new dress. And he said, come over here, honey. And she went over there and he said, I thought we agreed you would not shop. You bought a new dress. And she said, oh, I know, I did, but you know, the devil made me do it. And the husband said, didn't I tell you if the devil tells you to do something, you always have to say, get thou behind me, Satan. And she said to him, I did, I did. I said, get thou behind me, Satan. And then he said, oh, it looks even better from the back. <laughs> so I had to buy it. <laughs> Our lower nature is always wanting to do and have what it wants regardless of whether it's good or healthy for it you know think about the last time you would have liked to have said the devil made me do it was it about your money was it about a relationship gossiping maybe telling a fib was it about wanting to have power yeah, those are the things we do that are not coming from our higher consciousness. So think about it. Think about that time. I'm sure there was one recently. I know I have multiple times opportunities to overcome my lower consciousness every day. What were the red flags that came up that told you, that's not such a good idea. Well, think for a minute. In case you didn't come up with anything, hold that thought for later, because you want to say what red flags came up. Well, I, of course, had something happen last night. Of course I did. I was trying to figure out supper. I was a little... Um, tired from work and so I thought I don't know what I feel like eating there was salad and I knew I really need to keep eating that salad you know I have to I only try to shop once a month so I have to eat the food in the order in which it might spoil you know we don't like to throw away spoiled food throwing out spoiled food is throwing away money seriously it's one of the ways we have to economize I knew I had to eat that salad, but I didn't want just salad. I wanted something more. Oh, I realized I wanted potato pancakes. I love potato pancakes. And you think, well, how healthy could it get? Have a side salad and a potato and an egg and a little bit of flour, right? I mean, that, that makes perfect sense. And as always happens, that one potato and one egg and a little bit of flour made more pancakes than it would be wise to eat. So I made the pancakes, I made the first two, put them aside, put a little butter on them, and then I made the last of the batter, made a third very large pancake. So I put, I like to have my potato pancakes with cottage cheese on it. Don't knock it till you tried it, they are wonderful and a little bit of a green onion on top of that. Oh yes. So I had my two potato pancakes and in the frying pan, just sitting there doing nothing was that third pancake. I said, maybe I should go ahead and eat that pancake. And then I said, oh, you know you shouldn't. You had a sufficient amount. Um, when I look at these videos when I'm done to make sure they came out all right, I right away noticed the old muffin top. And I said, you know you don't like to look at that muffin top. You want to work that muffin top down. I said, oh, I know, but those pancakes are so good. And I just finally said, put it away. Put it away. 
my higher consciousness won. I put the pancake away. I didn't have to deal with it. So what is your issue? Is your issue spending money? Can you say to yourself, put it away? Can you make yourself a rule? That feeling you get is a red flag. It says danger. You don't want to do this. Even though your little self, we call it little I, big I, you know, like a lowercase I, uppercase I. And the lowercase I is the human part and the uppercase I is the spiritual part, the parent and the child. So we want to put the higher consciousness in charge. And my inner adult said, put the pancake away. And I put it away. Did it say, put your wallet away? Get out of Ava, get out of Amazon. In three days, if you really still want that, go back and get it. And there's very good chance that in three days, in three days you don't want it. Um, so we have to keep looking. How do we, how do we react more uh, quickly and uh, solidly and with less of a tug of war within our own mind and heart? How do we uh, get there? we have to work on increasing our intuitive sensing abilities and those are in our higher consciousness we have to practice i gave you a meditation yesterday the elevator meditation where you see yourself coming from the lower very very thick very dense very material consciousness and lifting yourself up out of that consciousness where there is no matter and you find that what matters here doesn't matter in the big picture that comes from practice i have been practicing these principles for over 35 years and i'm getting better and better at it but i'm not there yet one of the great differences that came to, for me when I discovered unity was I stopped saying the devil made me do it or anybody else made me do it. And I learned that the cause behind most of my suffering was me. That there were other ways I could handle things. In The Course in Miracles, it says I could choose peace instead of this. On an emotional level, I could have peace instead of this. I don't have to be upset. Another one of the principles from uh, that writing is um, very powerful. I am not upset for the reason I think. Next time you're upset, ask yourself, what am I really upset about? Are you upset because someone uh, 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 tried to devalue your intelligence or your <clears throat> personal power, your position at work, because nobody, nobody can judge who and what you are, and your job is not so much to please anyone, but to please God. By being good to other people, we are pleasing them, whether they feel it's pleasing them or not. In the end, it comes out good. So we have to keep asking. We get that red flag. We get that, I shouldn't be doing this. You know, that happened very, very clearly on the day of my uh, second wedding. Oh, I had gotten the other red flags. They had things, behaviors that I didn't like, situations that I didn't like, and yet I would take those red flags and chuck them. No, no. And there was a big one came that day. And it doesn't, it wouldn't look like a big one to you, but it was very, very clear. And I said, but I can't cancel the wedding now. I can't cancel the wedding now. There's people down there waiting for us to get started. The guests are there. The food is there. We rented that big old tent. This thing has already cost us. I know this isn't going to seem like much to you, but it was many years ago. It cost us $250 to rent that tent. I hate to think about what that would cost today. 
It was a rainy day. That should have been a sign. I mean, a rainy day. Having a wedding in a tent on a rainy day. Blech. Trying to find places to park the car at my parents' back. Huh? Those were nothing compared to that red flag that made me question, should I back out? But my little self didn't want to be embarrassed. My little self didn't want to look like a failure. And my little self had a belief that if I wasn't married, I wasn't worthy. Wow. Hey, you know what? If what I share about myself, even if I make myself look like a fool to you, if that helps you in any way, and if one day you're in such a position and you remember what I'm sharing with you now, it will have been worth it. And if, you know what? You can learn from your mistakes, but it's even better to learn from somebody else's mistakes, right? O-P-E other people's experiences one of the best ways to learn you already have the truth in you the truth in me was screaming out that day and i went ahead and i got married anyway and long term i truly truly paid the price so to to know what to do about those red flags is to honor and respect them they are there for you to be safe. Listen to them. They come up in your daily life and the more you become accustomed, the more you ride that elevator to higher consciousness, even if you only spend five minutes there, the more you do that, the, the, the better the road will be, the faster the road will, will take you where you're going. You know, it, it's talked about the, the cow pass. Many major freeways, you ever notice how they twist and turn without seeming reason? They were once cow pass. And the cows would walk a path and they walked the easiest way. Maybe there was a hill or a boulder that's not there anymore. But they would walk the path. And after the, several cows came and then maybe other animals used the path. And next thing you know, there's a valid path there. Next thing you know, there's a road. Same thing with what we might like to call the highway to heaven, the highway to higher consciousness. The first few times it's rocky and, and uh, hard to climb, but after you've done it a bunch of times, it gets easier and easier. I'm discovering that as I do continue to work with the guitar, not quick and not with great success, but I'm learning more and more to curl those fingers and to hold them with, you know, do with the fingertips as my calluses develop so I'm not muting the chords or making them go instead of bump. <laughs> so remember that we, I invite you to also look for red flags in not only your everyday life and relationships and habits, look for it in the news. When you hear something in the news and something says, that's not right, we have to ask ourselves, why is that not right? And what am I willing to do to help make that right? Because we are individual beings, but we are also a part of a larger collective. We are an inseparable part of it. And when one part heals, the whole heals. And when one part uh, has dis-ease, the whole has dis-ease. We are striving for wholeness, not only in our own lives, but our families, our communities, our country, uh, our finances, just everything. So learn to elevate your consciousness and look out for those red flags. When the red flag comes up, ask yourself, what is that all about? Can I choose peace instead of this? And I am not upset for the reason I think. Think about what that reason you are upset really is. Is it because you didn't get your way? Is it because you just plain didn't want to do, be controlled or, or whatever it is? Ask yourself because those red flags are gifts from God.
I invite you to hold that thought. Daily word for today is divine order. Hard to look at the news and to look out in the world and in some of our personal circumstances that are not good and to think that there is divine order. But I want to assure you that it, there is. Because even the discomforts and the dis-ease that we experience are symptoms of what we want to heal. It comes up for healing. So whatever it is, find those red flags, handle them. Don't just throw them away because I can tell you personally, that's not a very good idea. Know that I behold the divinity in you and that the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you, the power of God protects you, and the presence of God watches over you. Wherever you are, God is, and all is well. Namaste. Have a good day.